you know, not to sound wow. gloomy because I could go on and on and on and list a whole bunch more things, but it's just the reality. And so instead of like, you know, when I talk to people about the need for detoxification and I'll bring up these things, it's not to make them depressed or scared. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's just right. to say, Hey, this is what's going on. But listen, like there is something you can do about it. Welcome to the Salt Podcast, where we talk about all things simple. Yep, simple anointed living tips. I'm your host, Jenny Benya. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited that Sarah has accepted my invitation. And here we are going to talk to you about her own journey and some amazing tips that she has to offer. So Zara, I don't wanna take up all the limelight. I want to hear from you because I know you have an amazing story and that you have so much wisdom and experience now because of it. So why don't you just tell everybody who you are and what you do and why you do what you do. All right. Well, thank you for having me, Jenny. It's an honor to be here and uh, super happy to share and have this discussion. And so, yeah, my name is Zara Sita. And uh, what I do is I'm a holistic health practitioner. I have uh, professional training and certification and licensing in several different modalities. Um, It started out with traditional Chinese medicine and then over the years adding to that nutrition and herbalism, acupuncture, uh, neurofeedback, different forms of body work, um, holistic detoxification, and you know actually a lot of other things. So, you know, I, (laughs) people ask me like what I do, you know, it's not, I say holistic health practitioner because there are many different modalities. You know, when I started out in Chinese medicine and, and many people who follow that path, it's like, you know, that they give their awe to that one thing. I'm a different type of person, I guess. I like to continue yeah. learning and learning to what I know. And the reason I even ever got involved with, with holistic health and healing was for myself um, in my early 20s. I, I started to have some pretty strange health issues coming up. I say strange because there was a lot of different symptoms and things happening and I would go to doctors and they had a really hard time figuring out what was going on with me. Thankfully, um, I, I was raised by very health conscious people and, you know, I was raised in a holistic health type of environment And yet at the time when I started to have health issues, I was far away from family and the environment I grew up in. And so for a while I was, you know, all these doctors getting all these tests and just kind of getting the runaround and a lot of misdiagnoses, a lot of um, things prescribed to me that were actually harmful. And so I took it into my own hands to try and figure out like how to heal myself. And that was like opening oh. up a can of worms and it was opening up a new yeah. in life. And, you know, the, at first, you know, nutrition and herbs and cleansing and traditional Chinese medicine were really things that really, really helped me. And so that's what inspired me to go to school for traditional Chinese medicine. Um, mm-hmm. And although I did have a lot of healing come through my initial kind of steps on that journey of personal healing, I had many years ahead of me with, with many more things. It was like an onion, you know, as I would, oh, heal God, yeah. it was like, I was going to a new layer and something else would arise. And, and ultimately all those things were interconnected. And it, I look at, you know, that journey that I've been on and I, I'm actually really grateful. It was full of challenges and, and full right. of a lot of pain and fear and worry and all these different things, frustrations. Oh, um, but yeah. looking back, it, it, taught me so much. And I believe that, you know, for whatever reason, I manifested those experiences that perhaps I had that agreement with God before I came to have those experiences, because I turned it around to then try and help people from what I've learned. Um, And so through all of that, I also developed my own coaching and consulting business and uh, develop some, you know, different programs to provide people, you know, especially like I have a holistic detox program that, that I guide people through. 
And so, yeah, my health journey, it, it, it was, it's been a long journey and I don't even feel like it's over, even though I feel like I'm, Oh my really goodness. Good. Um, and from what I've seen from following you, you barely touched the surface. Um, I mean, <laughs> I think I've known you for almost 12 years now. Yeah. Um, it was really like chance, like how we met. I think my husband and I were, we're just starting to look into like where to move out of the U.S. too. And Costa Rica was like one of the places. And somehow we found you and, mm -hmm. um, and the, the place that you had at the time. I forget what it's called now. Awakening Soul, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just from the journey that I've seen you on, you know, you've even experienced some real hardships. I cannot believe how strong you stand right now as I'm watching you on the screen. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, like you said, I'm grateful for the experience that you've been through, like as hard as they may have been, because look at how much that you share that has helped so many people. Um, yeah. So today you're going to talk to us about uh, detoxification and um, your own journey with detoxification and what is it even because <laughs> like we were talking about before like people get freaked out by the word like detox like what in the world so give <laughs> us like the gist of what you went through and how what you learned out of it and what it is yeah so I mean i I looking back at my own experiences in education, I was definitely learning about holistic detoxification before I knew that I was learning about it. Um, oh. I, I, when I was shortly out of high school, I moved to an intentional artist community in Texas where I, I lived with a group of people for about oh. a little over three years. And uh, they were very, you know, they were very multifaceted artists, but also organic. They had a big organic farm. There were a lot of animals we were raising, growing food, growing herbs. They were teaching oh, that me sounds about amazing. All these different things. You know, they were teaching me about, you know, different things about cleansing the body. I, it was never put into the wording of detoxification or holistic detoxification. But I look back and I'm like, oh, they were teaching me a lot of things then. And I would bring some of that, you know, into my own healing practice over the years. But it wasn't until, gosh, maybe... 15 years ago, I started to really start to study and learn more about what it really means. What is detoxification? And so definitely, you know, as I've talked to people about detoxification, one thing that comes up for a lot of people is they think about drugs and alcohol and that type of detoxification. Oh. And that definitely, that's its own field of detoxification because there's very specific things to go along with the detox off certain drugs or you know I didn't even think about that alcohol. yeah and so that's not the type of detoxification I specialize in I I, I specialize in <clears throat> holistic detoxification that works with detoxifying the organ systems the blood the tissues you know cleaning the body out of microbes and pathogens and heavy metals and things like that um, so that our, our health can be rejuvenated. And part of what helped me become so passionate about it was one of the, the big things that happened on my journey with healing, which mm -hmm. was being diagnosed with cancer. And <laughs> that's a scary um, word. Yeah, well, yeah, it is. It is for a lot of people. I've, I've become very comfortable with the word. Um, and it's something that I'm very, very dedicated to continuing my education about and working with others and so my my network of people whether it be the clients I'm, I'm helping with or you know some different groups that I'm a part of or like I'm a new the, the designated nutritionist for a friends group for people um, with cancer so the whole cancer thing is very prevalent in my life um, my partner my life partner, he died in 2018 of cancer, so sorry. Um, but I also healed myself of cancer. And so, you know, I, I understand it can go a lot of different ways. And it's part of why I'm really passionate about it is there are so many people nowadays of all ages and all walks of life being diagnosed with cancer. And what I learned through my journey with it was the acceleration of my own healing came through a lot of detoxing, a lot of cleaning out of my body 
So yeah, we want to, with cancer and almost any illness, we want to heal the immune system and heal the, the metabolic system and, you know, heal the mitochondria and all these different things. But it's very hard to do that if your body is inundated with high levels of pathogens that could be mold, fungus, uh, toxins, uh, you know, junk in the colon that needs to be cleaned out, the stuff in mm -hmm. the liver that needs to be cleaned out. And so when we help the body, because the body is built to naturally detoxify itself, the problem that we're dealing right. with is we're getting too, too much input of toxicity in our environment, in our world, that it's very difficult for the body to keep up with it. And so that's where you start to see the body break down because it can't, the, the, high level of toxins start to degrade the, the body and our physical health and the way things are working. So as we manually kind of initiate the cleansing out of our bodies, it rejuvenates mm -hmm. the body and it comes back online with vitality and it comes to this place where it can renew itself and heal itself. Cause that's, that's the, the design God gave us is that we have this amazing design of a body that was intended to naturally detoxify itself, to self-regenerate and heal. But unfortunately, right, things are a little yeah. out of balance in our world. So we, in my view, we, we need to, to help that. We need to help our body <laughs> do that. A little out of balance, Sarah, really. A little <laughs> out of balance. Yeah, it's a little to out of balance. Say, <laughs> to say the least, woman. Oh my goodness, I mean, yes. like you're talking about being inundated with toxins <laughs> on a daily that we're not even aware of that exactly. almost feels like it like it's full on attack on humans um and mm -hmm. we have the choice to to be the guardians how they say of our what comes in our household but for for a lot yeah. of things we don't we don't know what's what's even in the air or the water or this or that like how you said mold what other yeah. things I, I can't think of like right now but what other things do you think that that in your experience that you've seen that plays a big role? Um, like as far as developing, you know, levels of toxins in that way, yeah. is that you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, well, I mean, there's so many things, but you know, what people know, are, right? cleaning, what they clean with in their homes, even if they use mm -hmm. gloves and they don't touch some of these things, you know, unless you're using non-toxic, all natural cleaners, most of those cleaners are endocrine disruptors. So even just smelling them, it, mm -hmm. it has an effect on the body, having them in the environment. So, you know, a lot of like bathroom cleaners, kitchen cleaners, uh, laundry soaps and fabric softeners and things like that. They have chemicals that are very, very toxic to humans and are degrading our, our genes and our hormones and making all kinds of chaos in our body. So definitely the cleaners, same thing goes for, um, you know, hygiene and beauty products. So, you know, shampoos and lotions and things like that. Mm -hmm. They're unless again, unless they're non-toxic and you're seeing that, you know, they don't have a high level of chemical additives that you don't understand how to say in them, you know, if they're, if they're more <laughs> they're great. But if they're not, if they're those commercial brands, they're full of fragrances, they're full of chemicals and all these things that again, disrupt the hormones and, and really mm -hmm. degrade the cells and can, can, can even make mutations to the DNA. So those things, um, mold, food, you know, if you're eating a food that's not organic, it, it could be genetically modified, it could be covered in agrochemicals, grown with agrochemicals, you know, pesticides, fertilizers, all those things. And there's air pollution, you know, that's very common. There's water pollution, there's additives to the water as well as leakage into water supplies. And so, you know, not to sound wow. gloomy because I could go on and on and on and list a whole bunch more things, but it's just the reality. And so instead of like, you know, when I talk to people about the need for detoxification and I'll bring up these things, it's not to make them depressed or scared. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's just right. to say, hey, this is what's going on. But listen, like there is something you can do about it. You know, you yeah. don't have to let your body fill up with this toxic load to the point that then you're developing cancer. And mm -hmm. we used to see that happening, you know, where cancer would people would be getting these cancer diagnoses or whatever their disease diagnosis might be at like, you know, 60, 70, et cetera. I mean, I have several friends who are under 40 and have lived very, very healthy lives and have been fighting cancer out of their bodies, you know, and, and it's, wow. 
it's because of what I'm talking about and it's not getting better, so to speak. So we have to get more proactive. And if I can use detoxification and holistic methods to, to heal myself of cancer, as many others have as well, you know, we all can, can be doing this to upgrade our health and, and to avoid disease. So if we can reverse disease by doing it, we can also do it and avoid disease. Right. Yeah. As best as we can, of course. Right. Cause like you said, that people leading healthy lives even have, have been susceptible to things outside of our control. But if we do stand, you know, for what is in our control, then we have, you know, a fighting chance. All right. So let's get into this whole detoxification. Um, what does that look like? I know it must look different for, for different people, but is there like a general protocol or you tell us? Um, okay. So yes and no. I mean, definitely. I'm a believer that every body is different. I don't believe that there's one diet that's going to work for everybody. I don't believe there's, you know, one cure for any specific illness that'll work the same for everybody. You know, let's say someone has a uh, chronic insomnia, let's say several people have chronic insomnia, and I've seen this time and time again, well, you can give them all the same sleep remedy, and maybe two of them won't respond to it, you know, and that's mm -hmm. just because each person's wired a little differently, and each person has a different manifestation of health. So yes, exactly what you said, it's going to look a little different for each person. Um, I have, like, I created a it's a three week program. It's a gradual it's so in that way, it's not like shocking to the system. Um, it's kind of right. gentle, but also does deep works this program that I have that I lead people through. And, you know, I have the ebook and everything's outlined in it. And so in a sense, you could say, well, that's kind of a one size fits all, but I also meet with each person in a phone call before they start it and really do a health assessment with them and get to know them a little better. <clears throat> and sometimes I have to tweak things, you know, take something out or add something in because each body is a little different. But so the cleanse that I do it, I developed it probably about 15 or so years ago. And I used to have a lot of people like when you came and visited where I was, you know, come and stay with me. And they would go through different programs. And a lot of people went through, you know, the detox program. That wasn't all that we were doing. We were also, you know, focusing on permaculture and building community and all these different things. But the, the health part of it is, was kind of my specialty. Um, so we used to do it in person a lot. Now I, I, ha I created it so, you know, I can help people get going on the program no matter where they live, even if they can't come visit me. Um, yeah, and, that's and perfect, it, especially yeah. nowadays. I mean, right now yeah. we're recording, it's 2021. And pretty much all meetings and interactions have become online yeah so that's wonderful yeah. that you provide it provide it um pretty much virtual yeah so what does it look like is it um you know um, what does it so involve way, so it starts out so each phase of that cleanse focuses on different parts of the body and ultimately my belief and my approach to holistic detox is it's holistic. It's, it's not just all natural. That's part of the holistic part, but it's holistic in the sense that it's all parts of the body. So mm. we're working on <clears throat> at first, it starts out helping detox the body of heavy metals, which I, I believe are one of the biggest hindrances to being able to overcome any illness and to avoid disease <clears throat> is that we, we uptake heavy metals from our environment. And there's so many ways that that can happen. And they are really, really nasty in the body as far as how they degrade health. And when there's heavy metals, for whatever reason, it seems to attract parasites. So you, you wanna get the heavy metals out, you wanna get the parasites out. <clears throat> so the first phase of that cleanse is focusing on that, as well as cleansing and opening up the colon the intestinal tract. So the mm -hmm. reason for that is the elimination pathways, such as the lymphatic system and the colon and all this, they have to be open for detox to work. If anything is, is clogged up or stuck, it's, it's going to create issues in the body. That's where it's going to be painful. If you do it properly, it doesn't have to be painful or feel like you're yeah. depriving yourself of anything. <clears throat> so the first part is, like I said, you know, cleaning the body out of those metals, those parasites, cleaning up the colon, and then it moves on into focusing on the, the liver and gallbladder. And then it moves on to the lymphatic system and the kidneys. 
And so throughout all of each of those phases, you're also, you know, continuing to clean metals out, continuing to clean toxins out, cleansing the blood. Um, a lot of people feel a rejuvenation in the brain because as the body cleans itself, the blood flows more, the oxygenation levels go up and the vitality raises. And for many people, their brains come on board like they haven't before. And uh, wow, yeah, it's a really awesome. beautiful process. And there's many other, you know, there's many ways to cleanse. <clears throat> there's herbal programs, there's diet programs, there's fasting programs, there's, you know, all kinds of supplements people take. And I do pull in a little bit of all of that into this program. Um, yeah. And it's, like I said, it's, it's, there's many ways, there's many, many ways to cleanse, but in a nutshell, that's the, the program that I lead. And, you know, and then I, I live a life of continually detoxing. And that doesn't mean like I'm continually doing cleanse. I actually do that cleanse about once a year. And then I do um, a shorter liver detoxification uh, quarterly. And then, you know, throughout the days and weeks and months of my life, I, I will do maybe a juice fast for a few days or, you know, I'll do a detox bath a couple of times a week or, you know, these different things that I'm continually just gently helping my body remove toxins and, and make sure that nothing's accumulating to the point of then degrading my system. <clears throat> wow, that sounds like pretty much everybody should do this like once how what would you recommend like once a year you said you do it yourself but like for people who yeah. have never done a detox ever yeah I would start out doing that and then you know I lead a, a private group in Facebook and I am always putting out new ideas for people so that if they want to keep cleansing if they want to go further you know like I said you know you can be doing detox baths or you can do a juice fast or you know you can do some infrared saunas or whatever it is to help your body so it's good to start with a cleanse and then you know do some gentle kind of maintenance work um, throughout mm -hmm. the year and, you know, it depends though, let's say someone's really sick, let's see they're, you know, dealing with healing cancer or whatever it is that they're working to heal, they might need <clears throat> a little more in-depth cleansing and healing work to, to get them to their next level. You know, for some people, let's say, you know, their, their liver's been in bad shape and their immune system's down and their hormones are off, I might suggest to them that they do the liver flush once a month for six months you know, where I, I wouldn't recommend mm -hmm. that for most people, but because of that person's health issues, you know, it might be a recommendation. Oh, okay. Wow. So it can, it can, it can be as uh, simple as like, you know, the protocol that you have, but then it can go deeper into specific systems, you know, the body needs to be cleansed or yeah, even, even more specific to whatever, you know, disease that somebody is, is going through. Exactly. But yeah. do you have like general tips for like where people should start even like, maybe even like looking at their own health, like somebody will say, oh, but I eat healthy and I live healthy, but okay, but what? <laughs> There's always something <laughs> that you can do, right? Definitely. And when people say they eat healthy, um, I always challenge them because <laughs> I just believe that most people don't eat as healthy as they could. That's been my experience. Mm. And I, I really want to encourage people because that to me is one of the, the first places. Yes, it's what we take out of our bodies, all that gunk we want to remove. But really, right. your first step really should be with nutrition because it's a daily thing, you know, uh, unless you're living a breatharian lifestyle, which is very <laughs> Everybody typically eats, maybe they don't eat every day, but most people do. And so what you're putting in your body, it has so much to do with your level of health. And that's going to be different for each person. Each person will have different needs and, and react differently to different foods. So it's important to find that. But I definitely would say, you know, if someone's looking at like, I want to clean up my health a little more, I want to boost, well, I'd say, okay, let's like first look at what you're putting in your body on a daily basis. And there's some things that I just recommend for everybody, because I've seen it, you know, I, I've been working in a functional medicine clinic, where we do a lot of lab testing and, and evaluating mm -hmm. of what's going on with people. And mm -hmm. I can tell you from that type of analysis and being around that I've been able to see the proof of something that I've known for a really long time. And that is oh, wow. foods like um, 
dairy and gluten and refined oils, refined sugars, uh, processed grains and starches, corn. Um, these foods are inherently, they're inflammatory foods. And so they can mm. create weight gain, they can create mucus in the body, they can create pain, and they can aggravate the system in a way that it's difficult to heal. And so, you know, definitely if someone's going through health issues, I say, take all of that out. Alcohol as well is another one, any soy that's not been fermented, you know, so just removing these inflammatory foods, any genetically modified foods and, you know, boosting up your, your fruit intake, boosting up your raw food intake. Doesn't mean you have to be a raw foodist, but definitely be eating a good amount of, you know, leafy greens and fruits and raw vegetables and seeds and things like that. And, you know, upping your omega-3 intake and decreasing your carbs and starches and decreasing your dense, heavy foods. And what you'll, you'll find is your body will start to naturally cleanse itself. Um, it'll kind of kick in. And I, I do think most people need more than that, but it's a great place to start, you know, and you, you mentioned about, um, you know, mucus forming foods, like, can you, can you go a little bit more into that? Because with my experience with, with, um, eliminating uh, mucus forming foods, it, it has created such a big difference, especially with my children. And so whenever I talk to my friends and they always tell me, oh, Jenny, because you know, I'm into essential oils and they want like a quick remedy. And I'm like, well, what have your children been eating? And it's like, everything is dairy. So can you go into that for a bit? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of foods that would be considered inflammatory foods. And it's something, you know, that you have to understand that the doctors, the modern medicine doctors, so there's a lot of kind of doctors out there. There's naturopaths, there's chiropractic doctors, there's Chinese medicine mm -hmm. doctors, but I'm talking about the conventional doctors. Like if you go, if you have health insurance, most likely who, who the type of doctor that would cover, or if you're going to go to the hospital or, you know, any of those types of right. doctors to no fault of their own, they're just not trained in nutrition. It's just not part of their training program. And so it's not talked about that much, you know, and you see like food research done or people are reporting on the benefits of certain foods and they might find, you know, it has these vitamins or these minerals or these antioxidants. And so they focus on that, but sometimes they skip or they don't understand. They don't really go deeper down into the fullness of how that food affects you. So say corn. Yeah, there's a lot of good things you can find about corn, but it also, there's just nothing around it. It's a highly... Uh, inflammatory food and it's an allergic food a lot of people have allergens with corn and mm. so these foods that are inflammatory meaning that they aggravate something in the system to create an inflammatory response and when that happens it creates mucus mucus is the way the body protects itself from inflammation and so when you eat these inflammatory mm. foods mucus is created and then that can clog up the system and it can slow things down the way that you absorb nutrients it, you know, just, it can create, it can lead to biofilms and just create a lot of problems in the body where the health gets kind of taken down and degraded. And so we want to really limit the foods that are highly acidic and highly inflammatory so that we can avoid having this mucus buildup in our system. It's, it's one thing that you'll see when there is advanced disease, there's a few things that are always there and that's inflammation and mucus. And that doesn't mean that there's mucus coming out of their nose and they're congested mm -hmm. and their sinuses. you know, a lot of people might not have any of that, but it's in their gut or it's in their colon, you know, or mm -hmm. it's in things like, um, even arterial plaque that in a sense is related to that, you know, so we don't want these buildups because they really impair health. So yeah, getting mucus free as much as possible is, is really helpful. What are the like top foods? Like you mentioned corn, but corn, you, you also mentioned dairy that are like mucus forming that are very yeah. common in, in dairy. For sure. Dairy is a big, big one and all kinds of dairy. Um, even goat and sheep dairy, which a lot of people think, you know, is a good alternative to cow dairy. It still is a mucus forming food, not as much as cow, but it still is. Um, gluten is a really big one, corn, dairy, refined sugar. So this is like your, you know, refined cane sugar, as well as high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup, agave syrup, 
Um, those are all refined sugars that create inflammation and refined oils. And this is a big one. And you talk about it common in people's kitchen. I say, just get these out of your kitchen. This is some of the most toxic food. It's like, if you think of your, think of your, just for a moment, think of your body, like a vehicle mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, to run your vehicle. Well, you have to put the right fuel in it. If you start pouring sugar down into the fuel tank, or you start putting water into the oil reservoir, it's not, it's going to break down. And the same thing with the human body. If you put the wrong oil in it, it does not work well over time. That's where a lot of toxicity and the mucus and all these things can happen. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. so refined oils, that's like canola, corn, soy, peanut, um, safflower, sunflower, all those are typically, unless they say they're an unrefined oil, those are refined yeah. oils. Yeah. Um, but Zara, so- like, isn't soy like such a great alternative to like meat and meat <laughs> replaced? Isn't that isn't soy like the new meat? Oh, Gosh. shouldn't we have more soy <laughs> in our lives? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's soy. You know, so first of all, soy soy is not fully bad. And yet we have to understand how to have soy. I think definitely there's been this overkill of trying to create soy-based products and push that as a meat alternative, as a protein source. And the way that that's happened and come about is there's a lot of just really bad products out there that people think are healthy through false marketing, false advertising, false kind of scientific studies, you know, that, that skew things a bit. So soy, as long as your soy is fully organic, which is really important because if it's not organic nowadays, it most likely is genetically modified, which Mm -hmm. just, just to put out there, there's a lot of proof and evidence showing that genetically modified foods, they raise your chances of cancer. They raise your chances of infertility they lower your immune system, all kinds of stuff you don't want. So you want to have organic soy. And if you look at the cultures that have used soy for a really long time, what you'll find is they always fermented their soy because when you ferment the soybeans, it, it kind of kicks out any of the negative effects of soy and makes it bioavailable and friendly to the body. If your soy is not Mm. fermented, it's basically toxic to your body, unless it's the, the young green beans of the edamame, you can eat mm-hmm. those unfermented as long as they're boiled. But other than that, you know, your soy needs to be fermented. So products like miso and tofu and tempeh, those are fine. But the other thing I was going to say about looking at the cultures where, where soy was very predominant for where it you know, came from, like say Japan and China and all those countries or all those places, um, it's <laughs> people did not eat it in mass abundance. They didn't have right. giant of tofu every day it was more like a condiment so you'd see the the tamare or the the soy sauces you know or you know having a little miso with a meal that has a few little cubes of tofu in it or you know having tofu as a side dish once in a while those types of things they didn't eat right. like soy burgers for breakfast and soy milk for lunch <laughs> and big plates of tofu every day and that will it will aggravate and imbalance the hormonal health in both men and women if you eat too much soy regardless if it's fermented or not so you want to be careful and yeah well, how does it affect our hormones so that's that's what people have asked me and they don't they don't want maybe they don't want to believe me but I'm like look just oh, it's, reduce it's your not, amount. It doesn't mean yeah, don't eat and there's it. There's tons it of studies on this. There's many studies. Mm-hmm. It's not like some kind of just like out there theory. I mean, it's you can see it's definite. Soy simulates estrogen and it can raise your estrogen levels if you have too much soy regularly. And because soy is now in so many things, we're seeing that. We're seeing more estrogen dominant cancers that are happening, you know, um, hormone driven breast cancer, hormone driven, uh, cancers to the reproductive system in women. And we're also seeing hormonal imbalances, too much estrogen in men as well. And, and how young boys are developing even and when they're eating diets with high levels of soy, which you don't have to be eating, you know, drinking soy milk and eating tofu to be getting a lot mm-hmm. of soy, you might not know you're getting it. So if you're, you know, buying prepackaged foods and 
or meat replacements or things like that, read the package. If it says that it has texturized soy protein or soy or soy protein in it, and you know, be careful because the, it really does affect our hormonal health. Now, if someone was too. somewhat estrogen uh, mm -hmm. deficient for some reason, yeah, they might want to eat a little more soy. You know, they might, but that's not a common problem nowadays because of the soy and how how yeah. we're dealing with too much estrogen in most people. Right, and I I was going to just mention that um, I think yeah, before I met my husband, I went to like a health evangelism college. And they are very like about being vegetarian and all these things, right? And my husband, he's always been way more into nutrition than I was. And he was vegan for like 10 years before I met him and all these things. And he was telling me like, they're all they're serving you is soy 24 seven. <laughs> you need to stop. Like he sent me a box of food just so that I wouldn't have to eat the, the food <laughs> that they would serve the students there, breakfast, lunch, and dinner because it was like soy replacement, everything like oh, wow. eggs and meat and, you know, and the sauces and tofu and everything with soy, soy, soy. And it started showing in my face, like mm -hmm. my face was breaking out like crazy. And my husband's like, well, we were, we were just dating at the time, but um, he was telling me, look, stop eating it. Just eat it for breakfast stop eating it for the rest of the day and see what happens. And for sure, like my face cleared up within a few days. Like, wow. obviously yeah. like I cleansed a little bit too, but um, so that was my experience with that. But another question that I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, probably a lot of our listeners are gonna be moms, um, you know, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and especially moms with like probably more than one child. And this has been my experience, like as far as like struggling with hormones and struggling with like even just feeding myself like nutritional, you know, focusing on eating healthy things um, because of like, just I have three children and I don't have time and all these things. Like what simple things would you recommend for women to eat healthy, like things that are easy daily and also what, to, what would you recommend to avoid? I know we've talked a lot about already avoiding, but also what supplements would be good for women okay. who want to overcome, like especially postpartum depression has been really um, you know, prevalent lately. Hey, it's me. Just taking a quick sec to let you know about the Pink Premium Access. Get the link for access in the show notes or heavenlytreasure.net where you can choose monthly or yearly access options. You will get all the uncut gems hidden from the SALT podcast, plus exclusive episodes, promos from guests, Ask Me Anything episodes, and private group Zoom calls for access members only. Sorry to hide these next gems from you. See you in the pink premium, and thanks for helping me keep the show alive and running what you've what we've talked about today I feel like even if you choose to do a detox or change something in your home there's like not side effects that wow you're going to regret making this choice am I right no and not that I know I mean if you as long as you know what you're doing you're doing it consciously and properly no like you know when I look at like all the people in the last year or so that did say my my holistic detox cleanse program and I, I keep in touch with people you know and I am there for them throughout the program and a lot of people like to continue writing me and giving me updates well I can tell you that not one of those people got sick in this last year and Oof. yeah none of them did and so it's just you know it's it's something to say about when we clean and care for our bodies our immune systems do what they're meant to do and yeah. that is to protect us against illness and disease. And, you know, you might get sick. And the way I look at some sicknesses, sometimes, like, let's say you get a cold or flu, like, yeah, your immune system might have been, you know, a little lower that allowed this to happen. But it's also a cleanse in and of itself, if you allow it to, to run its course, and you support mm -hmm. yourself with, with natural means throughout it, the fever, 
the the mucus the all those things the sweat like it it's kicking something out of you and it's activating your immune system but if you don't allow your immune system to get activated and you don't support your immune system and all you're doing is repressing it or adding chemicals to you know kill things and avoid actually that that engaged activation of it well over time you're going to get a lot weaker and more susceptible to disease so for me, I believe it's better to live holistically and naturally. And, you know, if you do get ill, treat yourself with as natural a means as possible. And if you really, really, you know, as far as pharmaceuticals and conventional medicine, I'm not saying wipe it all out and it shouldn't be there. Cause like I said, it saved oh. my son's life. And, you know, I've also been helped by it in certain situations, but I think it needs to be looked at as like more of an emergency and acute uh, place to go instead of that's our health care <laughs> because right. if that's our health care can we can we not recognize it's not working it's not i mean if there the incidence of disease is up the incidence of you know contagions and illnesses and all these things is up and you know even we're seeing like the onset of disease happening you know in children and babies and things like that well it's like i'm sorry this healthcare thing that's one part of it the other part's the environment and the culture we live in and the mindset and how we live and all those things but the healthcare system it's not a healthcare system it's not caring for our health <laughs> no it's not yeah, it's, it's, there does need to be a change. And definitely, like I said, all the people I know that went through my cleanse last year, not one of them got any sickness in this last year. Although that was the theme of the last year was watch out, don't get sick, you know. That's a blessing. That's amazing. I'm so glad that you've been talking about your cleanse, because I know that that um, you have a lot to share with people and that you have so much wisdom and you have, we haven't even touched upon all the things that you have gone through personally in your own life and witnessed others that you were there to be able to help them. Um, so thank you for taking the time to talk with us and, you know, unleash a little bit of, your, <laughs> of what you have all stuck in your brain and years of experience. So can you just tell everybody where they can find you and especially how they can book a consultation with you? Yeah, so my website is my name, basically, it's www.zarasita.com. And that Zara is spelled Z A H R A H, and then Sita, S I T A. So it's just zarasita.com. And you'll, you can go on there and you can see the different offerings that I have as far as consultations and coaching and cleansing programs and all of that. And same name, you'll find me on different social media. I have, uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Um, I think I'm on Telegram, even though I don't use it very often. But yeah, so you'll find me on social media with the same name. Um, uh -huh. And for anybody that does want to do the cleanse program, I have a private group on Facebook. And it's not designated only for people doing the cleanse program, but people who are interested in learning more and going deeper into cleansing and holistic living and healing and healthy eating. There's a lot of recipes and things in there. And that is called love body detox. And you can request to join if you're interested in that it's free. Um, I have a blog on my website with a lot of different articles about healing and health and mindset and all kinds of stuff along that line, healthy living. And um, so yeah, those are the main, main places to find me at this time. Okay, great. So I'm going to link all of those in the episode notes. Depending on where you are listening to this from, you can probably just swipe up and you'll see those links. And um, for the for the people that have been listening, what what last thought can you give to them like inspiration or motivation to work on their health? Gosh, I mean, health is... <laughs> Just trust me, if you, if you haven't experienced health issues or you haven't had a loss of health in some way, you're really, really fortunate because anybody who has struggled with health issues or been sick or you know, their health has been impaired, it's hard and it impacts your, your mindset, it impacts your emotional health, it impacts so many things in your life that if you wanna know freedom and if you wanna know happiness and you really wanna live your life to the fullest, having a daily investment in your health is one of the best things you can do. 
And, you know, it's no fun to be sick and it's no fun to have your life limited by sickness or disease. So I really encourage people to love yourself enough, to love the gift of life that God has given you, to love this body that, that we have been gifted with for our spirit to dwell within and experience this life on earth that has so much to experience, so much beauty, so much love, so many amazing things. And I believe that we all have a purpose that we come here with so much potential and talent and a purpose to share with this world. And if you're sick, you have to then give all your energy to trying to get better. And if your health has failed because you haven't invested in it over time, it's going to limit you. So for you to really be the fullness of who you were created to be, that daily investment into your health is, is a gift to yourself, really. And so I, I just really encourage people to love themselves and to thank God for their gift of life by, by investing back into yourself. Sarah, wow. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for your time and for all your beautiful words and wisdom. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me and sharing with me. Thanks for listening in. Be sure to hit subscribe and visit heavenlytreasure.net for more. See you on IG at Heavenly Treasure Living. Till next time, blessings and remember to be the salt of the earth.